there. My name is Cheryl Lithgow and I'm a nurse consultant by background. I work for Benenden Health as their society matron. The session today will be how we can support our business colleagues and our members who may have heightened anxiety during the pandemic and around the coronavirus. It's equally important when we're looking at supporting our members and colleagues that we consider all of those that are impacted by this. So that may be colleagues who are furloughed, maybe colleagues who are working from home, returning to the office, or actually facing redundancy. Benenden Health conducted some research. There were some quite interesting um, results of that. A third of UK adults are suffering from increased mental health problems during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. And one in five of those state that that's through increased stress. It's 11% that are very concerned at the moment about losing their jobs and 8% are very stressed by their current workloads. 22% stated that they felt their mental health would improve if they felt that returning to their job was safe. So that we are very aware that our mental health is under undue pressure at the moment during this crisis. The crisis itself can impact on uh, employees mental health and well-being in a variety of ways and can be for a variety of reasons. It may be for those that have increased caring responsibilities, whether that be homeschooling, looking after elderly friends and relatives, etc. There is also that perceived risk of returning to work or having to use public transport that people deem as having an increased risk during the pandemic. People are maybe concerned about working in close contact with others or their working hours are putting them at an increased risk. It could just be the impending thought of coming out of lockdown and that reintroduction to society. Anxiety itself shows in lots of different ways and it's usually secondary to a fear of the unknown, that little bit of change and uncertainty that can happen that's definitely prevalent at the moment. It can show itself in lots of different ways. So it can be shown in altered sleep, appetite, in appearance, but also people tend to have a lot more of those what if thoughts. What if I go out and catch this? What if I have to go back into work? And all of these can increase that anxiety and panic. Usually to help this information is required and it's required regularly and relevant and contextual to the problem that's causing the anxiety in the first place. It's really important to encourage your staff to seek professional help when their anxiety level is starting to impact on their normal daily life. Some of the things that employers can use to identify increased anxieties within their teams are if people are taking more sickness days or more personal days if those are increasing, if we notice a decrease in performance that can have a direct correlation also. Your line managers, your colleagues who know you very well may also be instrumental in identifying increased stress and that could be from those personal conversations that you have, it could be from the changes in appearance that you are demonstrating. Have a think about those colleagues who have been very comfortable about having um, Microsoft Teams, Skype, whatever digital platform you're using. They've been very comfortable and confident using their cameras but suddenly turning them off. Is this a change in their behaviour? It's really important to equip your line managers with the ability to have open and honest conversations uh, with colleagues and using those open questions how are you feeling today? How are you finding working from home? Is there anything the business can do to help? But also by being personable in themselves. So using comments like, I'm finding it really challenging getting on the bus. It's concerning me. What about you? Is there anything you're finding challenging? As a bit of a conclusion, there's three things that employers can do to help to alleviate and heighten the awareness of anxiety. So from an alleviation point of view, have mental health first aiders on the team. These are really good ports of contact for not only providing support, but providing uh, a good level of signposting. 
consider using your employee benefits packages so that there is robust mental health support and ensuring that your colleagues know how to access this easily and regularly. And finally, it's really important to make sure that information is available, it's contemporary, it's contextual, it's relevant and it's regular. That helps to provide some of the answers to those what-if questions. Stay safe everybody, thank you.